go. All right, so I'm Zach, and I'm going to talk about the standard library, um, which is a part of Ruby. And I'd like to start off by saying thank you to all the organizers and all the sponsors. It's been really great to us, especially the dinners and the drink offs and everything. It's been awesome. And all the attendees that made it out, I know some of you traveled very far, out of the country even, and it's great. So let's just give everyone a round of applause for all their hard work. So it's exciting to be a part of Buffalo's first movie conference, and I'm very privileged to be here, and it's really an honor. And I just want to say it's great to see so many new faces and so many new Rubias in the community in this like buddy little town. And just like welcome to the Ruby community, I guess. Everybody, so that's always good. Um, we got good people. And so this is actually the Nickel City Ruby Conference. So Ruby is in the title, which I don't know if you knew that. Some talks were maybe specific about Ruby, but I'm actually going to talk about Ruby. I'm going to not. I promise PJ I won't make any Nickelback jokes. <laughs> um, I'm not a jokester, anyways, but I'm hoping that we can share um, some learning and experience some of these libraries that come on Ruby and you guys can pick up some stuff or learn some things or whatever. So it's mostly like a history lesson and it's important to learn from our past. Some of these, some of these libraries are very bold and crusty, and, but there's a lot of things we can learn from them and there's a lot of things we can pick up. And it's just good to know where your past was to see where you're going in the future, right? So we're very lucky today because of the tools that we have, um, like Ruby Gems, for instance, bundle art, these things make our day-to-day -day life as developers very easy. And so we're very, very uh, you know, we're spoiled and we're very grateful for having these things. Um, but once upon a time, you know, not very long ago, there was no bundler. There was no Ruby gems. And, you know, what, what would it be like if we didn't have these things? If any of you were Rubyists, you know, 10, 15 years ago, which I sort of doubt, um, you would know. But basically, what we had was this library <coughs> This library called setup.rb, which was written by Aoki Sun um, like 17 years ago, literally, this was written. And it was a library to help you install Ruby programs on your computer. And so there wasn't like a gem install button, right? We had to like download the source and like, you know, this was like literally the Wild West. We had libraries on this website called Ruby Application Archive, which was created like 16 years ago. And just recently faded away from the due to server issues. But basically, what you have is um, it's basically a wiki where you can add your to your application, your library, and you can see like your README, your license, and like literally a download link to a tarball which you had to download and then like run setup. And so you know we didn't have GitHub, we didn't get clone things. So I mean there was some version control, but <coughs> it wasn't as prominent especially for installing libraries. So because of this, um, Ruby, Ruby added the standard library to the installation so that you could get access to a lot of common libraries um, that people just need on their day-to-day -day basis without having to go through this, um, whether you don't have internet or whatever for your install. So we had the standard library. And it's still around, and it's, there's some really interesting stuff, so that's what I want to show you. And so, the first thing I'm going to show you is the Ruby. It was written by Seki san about 10 years ago. As a, so it's, it's basically a way to communicate over TCP um, between Ruby programs across processes or across networks, what have you. And so it's a really good way to like, develop distributed systems in Ruby. And it was initially written as like a WebRack plugin like 10 years ago, but these days there's some pretty interesting stuff you can do. And I'll show you one, which is a chat program. So 
for starters, I just have this server class for DRuby. I should probably call that. You guys see that in the back? Bigger. Bigger, bigger. Okay. How's that? Bigger, bigger. That's way too big. I can't even read it. <laughs> okay. So, yeah, so the server class, um, it distributes messages across clients. So you just have an add user method that creates a new client with you know, the, the address that it's connected to, and then you can just pass messages along back and forth. So if we want to use that, We first need the require D or B and the chat server. We need our client class. That's what we're going to make these connections and store like some information to pass them on. So very simply, we have like what string? So this, this is some complicated Ruby. The tricky part is actually connecting the client and getting messages <coughs> from the user. So the first thing we do is we need the actual address. Okay, 
So we just create a new object and then we're going to <coughs> pass along our user. And do something like this. Object. And we'll do add user to the chat. Try to find a better way to do this. Um, essentially, we need that thing, which is the last line of the standard input. I don't know any other way to actually access this other than C, but I'm not going to write C live because I don't want to die. Which I'm already doing this. Yeah, so let's try this out. So, first thing we do is we have to start up this server. I think it's fine. And then we will. Bigger. Big, big. Thanks. How's that? Good. Little here. Okay. So three. Mm -hmm. All right. So my name is Zach. Two Z's. And line twenty-five. Local host is misspelled. Oh, you're a genius. Thank you. No, it's in the other file. Yeah. Oh, it's in the client. Okay. 
least give me a line number. Like, help me out here. <laughs> <laughs> Two for one, remote dot message. That must be it. Key and message. Yeah, I was supposed to do something, but I don't remember that. We'll just give it what it wants. What could go wrong? <laughs> running. It is? Okay. Hopefully it works. Um, yeah, so RSS. This is also going to use another library called OpenURI, which is in the standard library, but not as um, <coughs> not as important. It just basically gives us this one thing. So URL, use this thing. And it just, just gives us kernel open, which basically it takes like, so like HTTP. It reads that and says like, oh, you're trying to access a website. So use this class and do this stuff. Sort of. So we read out a feed. And we can do stuff like print the title of the feed, and we can iterate through the posts. And we can print like the title of the posts. And I think this description is the actual post itself, and you can, do, you can also do this, which uh, should give credit where credit's due, right? And we'll just do some breaks now. Alright, so we've read our RSS feed using the library, and I just put it out right in the console, but you can see the title, author of the name and post itself. So that's RSS. That's all I have for that. Next one. 
We're going to move right along because we're getting close to lunch time. Next one is RDoc. I love RDoc very much. It's a great library, <coughs> and it's how we document Ruby programs mostly. It's how Ruby Core documents itself, and it can parse like C files, Ruby files, all that good stuff. And it was originally written by Dave Thomas, um, like roughly 10 years ago. And it was written because of the Pickaxe book, which if you haven't read it yet, you should definitely grab that book. It's awesome. But so he wrote the pickaxe book so he could contribute documentation back upstream, which is another good like thing you should do if you're ever like writing a blog post or something. Contribute what your knowledge that you've gained or your experiences back upstream to, to the projects. Um, so this isn't actually Dave Thomas, this is Eric Hodel, who maintains our doc for the last like five or six years and <coughs> helped me get my start in Ruby Core. And so he's just a really smart guy, knows a lot of stuff, and wrote a markdown parser in our doc in pure Ruby um, using like JPEG DSL or something like that. Um, so if you've ever used the R discount jam, it's sort of what I'm gonna do <coughs> briefly. So let me do this first. And yeah, so class markdown and in our discount just has like a markdown class. And it does like it does a few things, but basically it, it like takes an instance with a string of markdown text, and then you can do like two HTML. You know, just print out HTML. So that's essentially what I'm going to do. So we need the text, save options, even though I'm not going to really be using them, only to set up the parser and formatter, which is. So the parser is the markdown parser, and the formatter will be like HTML. You can also output like table of contents. There's different formatters. It's really easy to write formatters and, and work with this stuff. Our docs are really, really well documented. So we set up our text and our options, operands. New. And a parser is my cut. So then we want two HTML. And <laughs> I broke them. <laughs> All right. What? What am I doing wrong here? There we go. 
Yeah, so that's some HTML that comes with a lot of like neat things like labels that you might want to use for like an anchor tag or something that like links to a specific part of the documentation. <coughs> yeah, that's basically it for our doc. It's all Ruby, which is nice. We don't need extensions to have a markdown parser anymore. Um, okay, next one. I have like a few minutes. I'll do it real quick. I know you guys are hungry. Chris is. Um, yeah, so back in the day, way before I was probably even on a computer, there wasn't like GUIs. We didn't have window interfaces, we didn't have windows and that stuff. So what we had was terminals and things like that. So when we wanted to generate like interfaces for, for programs, we use a library called Curses. And so like 15 years ago, before RubyGems and all this stuff, Windows was at like 95. And uh, Chudo wrote curses, and it's like a C, it's, so it's actually a C extension, but it's useful for, I don't know, nothing, but it's interesting. I found it interesting. <laughs> so I'm going to show you. Thank <laughs> you. 
that's it. So thank you for having me.